rest of the story. Who's been sleeping in my casket? The streets are painted in moonlight and shadow. The bell in the old church tower strikes 10, 11, 12. Walk with me, if you will. Down the spectral avenue to the undertaker's. Follow me through the door and down the stairs to a silent room, vacant but for a solemn shape, a long wooden box lying flat, an empty coffin, or... It is supposed to be empty. Draw near if you dare, for the lid is open. And whatever lies therein awaits the warmth of your lantern's light. You see, do you not? The casket is occupied by the motionless form of a young man, perhaps 23, his eyes closed in the apparent peace of death. Stare harder at those closed eyes. You're likely to see a slight flutter. And your gaze remains fixed, your own pulse pounding as the eyes at which you stare suddenly open and stare back at you. Now, forgive me for not introducing you otherwise. This is Tommy. Tommy works here, works for the undertaker, polishing coffins. Sometimes he sleeps in them. Everyone knew the undertaker in Portobello, Scotland, if only because everybody visited him sooner or later. He was a remarkable man who conducted his profession with the zeal of one besieged by competitors, which he was not. That is, whenever he heard a neighbor who was ill, he would call on him ostensibly to cheer him up, and yet all the while he'd be mentally measuring him for, for a casket. The undertaker made his own coffin, you see, usually of mahogany, bleached to resemble oak. But he did not apply the finish. That task was the province of a young expert named Tommy, who had already worked for many of the best cabinet makers. His college-trained specialty was French polishing, at which he was better than anybody. Tommy worked with wood only part of the year. During the warmer months, he was a lifeguard at a large saltwater swimming pool that made ocean-like waves by machine. Anyway... At the undertaker's, rush jobs often demanded late hours, so Tommy sometimes found himself actually sleeping in the casket on which he was working. Surprisingly comfortable, he thought. Then one night something dawned on him. He was clearly the most skilled wood finisher in town, maybe the finest French polisher in all of Scotland, and yet no matter how good he was or how much better he got, the very best destiny for his very best work was to go into the ground, never to come out. The thought of that began to bother Tommy to the point that he began rethinking his life. And that's when the young man got out of the coffins, literally out of woodcraft altogether, and found contentment in another craft. As an actor, even portraying James Bond and beyond. Oh, yes. You know Tommy Connery, the Scottish coffin polisher, but you know him by the name Sean Connery. Now you know the rest of the story.